On today's episode of Map Doctor, we'll be taking these two maps and turning them into these two maps. See, I showed you this time. Let's get started. Map Doctor! Map Doctor. The total time it took to create these two maps was four hours, so about two hours each map. That just goes to show with a bit of effort, it can really go a long way. This map was submitted by Maui Games Studio and he did send me an email just with a bit of backstory about what this level is exactly. It's the main house for the main cast of characters, being a mother, a father, a grandmother and two kids. One of the first things I did was change all of the wall tiles because the creator of these maps showed me what the house looked like from the outside and from the outside it looked like a log cabin so I wanted to sort of represent that with the interior tiles as well. I started off over in the grandma's room doing my favourite thing of placing a rug in their centre of the room and then I brought a window in, manipulating the pixels to make the windowsill much longer than it usually is. I grabbed a bed and a bedside table from the sci-fi tile set. I grabbed a shelving unit and manipulated the pixels so it's smaller than a normal shelving unit. As well as a bookshelf in general. I grabbed this photo of like a king and manipulated the pixels so it looked more like a picture of like or a painting of an old man, maybe a husband. And then I grabbed this table here and changed the table colour to more of a pinky colour than this bright red. Finishing this section off by placing a uh, pile of books and a cup of tea, as well as a chair. The main thing I'm trying to achieve when building out these areas, especially in this home, is to give it a real lived-in feel. So designing this hallway here, I wanted to give it this sort of space of like a little office almost, but it's out in the hallway. Somewhere where either the mum or dad sits down to read letters, write letters, read books. You know, somewhere that's not the kitchen table to file your tax paperwork. I'm not the biggest fan of RPG Maker's uh, default stairs that go down sideways, so I spend the next moment here just making my own, and all I'm doing is grabbing the original wood stair and then rotating it, and then what I'm doing is just to the right of every stair I'm adding a bit of a shadow so you can see the physical drop off between each step. Over in the parents' bedroom, I start by placing the bed, because, you know, it's a bedroom, and then adding some bedside tables, a closet, but then at the end of the bed, I grab the bookshelf, and I just run it along the end of the bed, uh, just for like a bit of storage space where their feet would normally go. I add in a small coffee table just in the bottom right hand corner of the room where they can sit down and drink coffee and chat about how horrible their children are. And then just to finish it off I do my favourite thing of placing a rug in the room. I don't know, I just I really like what it does to a room. Lastly I fill out the room with some clutter, a dagger on the wall, a sack on the bedside table, that sort of thing. Down in the bottom story I make a quick adjustment to the layout of the rooms and then I do what I did upstairs and that is change the wall tiles to be a log cabin tile just because again that's what the outside is. So I replace all the tiles in here for the walls as well as just uh, the floors as well, I flatten out the floors. Thank you. 
Starting in the kids' bedroom, I place a closet on the bottom right hand wall and then a bedside table just in the middle of the room. And then I import two beds. One of them is, well they're both the blue bed, but I import both of the beds and then with one of the beds I decide to colour adjust the bed to make it a different colour. Just because it looks a bit weird to have two beds of the same colour in the room, so I start editing the colours of the second bed. I went with this tealy aqua colour because uh, they're my brand colours and I'm egotistic. And I finish off the bedroom really just by placing clutter around the room. One of the big things I did was put a bookshelf above the window and then edited it to be long and then placed some more clutter on top of that. I placed a rug in because I do that. Edited. edited. What a word, edited. Edited. I edited. Keeping faithful to the original map that was submitted, there's this table right next to the bedroom that has a plant on it. What I did was grab a closet top and then a closet bottom and merged it together. So you've got this table with some drawers underneath and then I put a plant on top of it as well as some paper and ink. The storage area is one where I did change the layout, which is where I put the wall in between it and the table below the window. For the kitchen, I wanted to put it on this raised platform, so I grabbed the tile and then just shadened the bottom of it to give it this ledge look. The kitchen was mostly simple, it was just copying and pasting some assets directly from the RTP and placing them in. One thing I did do was grab the kitchen top and put it towards the bottom wall so it looks like there's a table on the other side. I did spend far too much time, more than necessary however, recolouring this metal chimney looking thing which goes above the oven. I just wanted to give it uh, the same sort of feel of the oven, which is just this sort of rusted metal vibe. Finishing up the kitchen, I just placed some clutter on the walls. And in case you haven't noticed, yes, I am using assets both from the RPG Maker MV as well as the RPG Maker MZ uh, RTP. The area was a bit large and open, so I did make this little landing, like this rising up to a sort of uh, level where the dining room and kitchen would be, and then you'd have to sort of go downstairs towards this hallway. Then it was just simply adding clutter to the hallway that was things like bookshelves, cases, that sort of stuff. The dining room was quite simple, I just stayed true to the original design and had a 2x2 two two table with a thing of bread on the table, a basket of bread, a bousquet. What I'm trying to do over here on this uh, corner beam is try to make notches in the wood like it's measuring someone's height. That's one of the things I'm trying to do to make this sort of lived in feel for this space, is that as the kids have been growing up, their parents have been making notches in this little wooden beam here to represent the different heights the kids were as they grew up. And it's just all part of this small things, but it just adds to this sort of homely feel. Even if not every player is going to immediately recognize that's what that is. 
Another homely thing I'm doing is I'm making some scorch marks in the wood over near the wood fire oven. Again, to give it a more lived in feel, story time when I was about uh, 16 years old, I really liked to go bike riding out in the local town. And uh, what one thing we had was a wood fire. So no one was home at the time and I decided it'd probably be good if I replaced the wood in the wood fire before I left, just so the house would be warm when we got back. I opened the fire door and this flaming log fell out onto the floor and left scorch marks in the wood. Uh, that's still there today and that's been about 10 years so you know adding little features like this gives it that lived in feel. One other small thing I'm doing just before moving on to the shadows and the lighting layers is I'm adding these sort of hard shadows. Shadows that are going to be cast by things like this bookcase here or by a bed or by something. Hard shadows that are not going to appear over the top of the player but underneath the player. Um, I'm just doing this so it looks a bit better after the shading. You can just go simple and do shading by uh, having it all above the player, but by adding these hard shadows below the player, you just get that extra level of depth. As with every time I do shadows, I'm selecting the entire room and covering it in darkness and then I'm selectively erasing that darkness uh, from light sources such as the window in this grandmother's room. Once I'm sufficiently happy with how I've deleted the shadows, then it's time to go in and start adding the light beams that are coming through. Uh, one of the things I'm doing here is adding in some dots on the floor to represent the different panes in the windows. And then I just go over that until I'm happy with how that looks and move over to the parents' bedroom to do the exact same thing. I get rid of the shadows that I feel like I should be getting rid of, as well as uh, adding light to the room. There's not really much to say in terms of doing this shading. It's all pretty much the same uh, no matter where, whether you're in the bedroom, the kitchen, you just essentially have to add light coming from the light sources and then, you know, shade areas that wouldn't be in the different light sources. It's, I can't go on too long on this topic just because it's not really a topic you need to talk about that for that long, unless you're doing something like ray tracing and dynamic lighting, which is not something we do in RPG Maker. So I think what we'll do is we'll speed through the shading and the light sections of this video for both upstairs and downstairs, and then we'll come back after everything's done and see what this all looks like in game. We'll also do a comparison from what it used to look like to what it looks like now, just to show you the benefits of taking a bit of time and making these maps look awesome.
Also, just a reminder, if you would like one of your own maps to be featured in an episode of Map Doctor, then send me an image of the map to levelupdes at gmail.com with the tagline Map Doctor, and you might see one of your maps being remade in this Map Doctor series. We're coming into the tail end of things now and I'm really excited to show you guys this level because just before we jump in, this is what these two maps, the upstairs and downstairs, looked like before it had an amazing transformation on the Map Doctor series. Now, this is what they look like afterwards. Wait, wait, before you see the level, what, I really need you to scroll down. Yeah, and you see that little, like, like the thumbs up, like the like button? I need you to hit that. Yep, just, y y your mouse is over. I need you to, yep, click it. Yeah, awesome. All right, let's go see. And at the end of it, this is the map we have. We've got the parents' bedroom over here, with shadows being cast off these objects. Go out here, Dad's, uh, Dad's a tad busy at the moment. Come into Grandma's room. Ah, oh, she's having a nap. Downstairs, you got this little stairway upwards towards the dining room. Mum's... Mum's cooking dinner. Light streaming through the window. You should probably put this plant in front of the light. I mean, it needs to photosynthesize. It won't do well sitting in the shadows. Come over here. Sister's in the fucking way. Let's just clip through her. And on into the bedroom. It really does make a difference when I've recolored this bed, so it's not just two of the same bed. It really stands out, makes the room pop a bit more. In fact, if you don't hit the like button, I'll be mildly upset, so you better hit it. Thank you. 